Welcome back to Small Arms Firearms, where you get your trusted firearms information from a weird version of Seth Green. Today on Small Arms Firearms, we're going over subsonic 300 blackout self-defense ammo or hunting ammo. I'm going to try and go through this as quick as possible because there's a lot of information to get through and a lot of testing that I've done over the last nine months to a year on trying to find out what self-defense 300 blackout load I was going to keep in my house and my rifle. The ammo that we're testing out today is Hornady 190 grain sub X, Lehigh's 194 grain maximum expansion, Lehigh's 198 grain controlled fracturing. Gorilla ammunition, their silverback 205 grain. Discrete ballistics 188 grain. And the maker's projectile, which is a 200 grain opening projectile, but it just so happened to be loaded by Black Butterfly ammunition. You can also get it from Defiant ammunition. Um, I have also ordered the projectiles myself and loaded my own rounds, but I wanted to use as many factory loaded cartridges as I could for testing because not everybody has a reloading press that can do this on their own. I have been doing this testing off and on again over the last almost year. The newest addition to this is the Discrete Ballistics cartridge. That one I've only taken out twice and done several rounds through that one into gel. The other cartridges in here have been tested numerous times in gel in basically the same ambient temperature of 72 degrees and a 20 inch gel block. The gel is the 10% ballistics gel from Clear Ballistics and it's the 20 inch shooters block. Disclaimer, the tape measure you're gonna see bounce in some of the high speed footage don't use that as a metric for the impact and kind of the energy transfer because it was placed in different spots on accident. Sometimes it wasn't even there. It's kind of funny to watch though. I'm going to post the ammo velocities uh, inside the description of the video rather than just go over it in the clip so you can kind of see what speeds I'm getting out of these ammo. None of this ammo was supplied to me. I bought it all with my own money except for one box of the Gorilla ammo and we'll get to that later on in the review where they sent me a box for free after I was having some issues with the initial box they sent to me. Even the gel blocks, all bought on my own. This is unbiased opinion on ammo that I wanted to find that I can use for home defense and trust with my life if it ever came to that situation. So I wanted to make sure that when I'm spending almost $3 a cartridge, I wanna make sure that that stuff is expanding how it's advertised as to expand. Yes, I know, supersonic 300 blackout ammunition is going to deliver more energy. We all know that, there's not arguing that, but there's a reason why I have an eight inch 300 blackout rifle with the suppressor on it, and I wanna use subsonic ammo if I'm shooting inside my house if I had to. Out of the seven cartridges that we tested, we're gonna start with last place, and that's the Hornady 190 grain Sub X. The Hornady Sub X had a penetration depth that ranged from 15 inches all the way to out past 20, depending on what happened to the expansion of the projectile. Now, these rounds are fairly cheap for an expanding 300 blackout. But as you can see in some of the pictures that we're going to show here, calling it expanding is a little bit misleading in my opinion. It does peel back, so in essence, yes, legally you can say it expands further than it was before you shot it. It's cheap. It's about half the price of some of the other expanding projectiles in here. And unlike the other projectiles, this one uses lead where the other ones are all copper. It's more readily available than some of the other cartridges, so you'll see people using it. That doesn't mean that it can't drop a hog like they want it to if you put the shot placement correctly, but for the added price, I can't justify buying these. And as you're gonna see here on the high-speed footage, the wound channel just doesn't really show up very well. The initial impact is just not great. The primary wound cavity, not great. Uh, it even was zipping through 20 inches of gel block when I first tested these om almost a year ago. For the price, I can't justify ever buying these. And now I, before I had my gel blocks, bought like three or four boxes of these and now they're sitting in my basement because I have zero use for them except for plinking, I guess, at this point. And I also tested the Lehigh Extreme Defense in 9mm, the 90 grain bullet, 
and that's the one that kind of looks like the screwdriver. The initial impact and kind of the energy transfer in the primary wound cavity and the wound channel, permanent cavity, were actually better than this. So you're pretty much better off using that as a defensive cartridge in 9mm that's also barrier blind than you are using the Hornady sub -X. Some people have told me over and over again that it works fine for them hunting hogs and coyotes. That's great. That's not what I'm wanting this for. I'm wanting it for self-defense, and this thing just flat out fails. Yeah, they don't expand for shit. Well, it's disappointing. Hornady, you have let me down. It's pretty good. Oh, there was nowhere near what the other one was. Yeah, it's not like Levi. Oh my god, that was weak. Coming in at number seven is the Gorilla Silverback in the new three pedal design. This was the original projectile that was sent to me when I ordered from Gorilla. And when I first shot these, the video is still on my channel in early, one of the earlier videos I uploaded, you'll see that two of them that didn't expand at all. They were shot from about 10 feet away, 70 degrees, 71 degree ambient temperature, fairly newly remelted gel block, and it zipped right through 20 inches of it, hit a backstop and shot across the room. I can't explain why it did that, because now after having this ammo sit in my basement for about seven months, they're starting to expand now and actually stop in a gel block. Being kind of confused and upset that I spent over $3.50 per cartridge on these, I contacted Gorilla's customer support. Ended up talking to the owner of the company. This the customer support was fantastic. They were a little confused, as I was, as to what the issue was. They also said that they test their ammo and gel with a 16-inch barrel. So I have a half the size of that barrel, so I'm guessing the velocity just wasn't high enough. They said they offered to send me another new box, but this time they were going to send me their original design which was a four pedal design. And on the four pedal design, he said that they were actually annealing the copper to make it softer. And since they did that, he assumed that since the copper was softer on the four pedal, that's, that would be the projectile that would expand for me since I was having issues with the three pedal. He also said that they were seeing similar results with the new design if the gel block was remelted. Now Clear Ballistics says on their website, inside their frequently asked questions, that the consistency of the gel will not deteriorate over time. It will change in color and become more opaque, but it will still be calibrated correctly as the 10% level. So, what did I do after they said that? I ordered another brand new 20 inch shooter's block from Clear Ballistics. I took that block out to the range and I tested it with the three pedal and the four pedal Gorilla Ammo. And I still had issues. With the brand new gel block, I wanted to try the three pedal design first because that's what they sent me originally that I couldn't get to expand at all. I tried it with that and I was able to recover two of them that expanded. The other two of the four that I shot zipped through the 20 inches of gel block and I never found them again. It looks like they might have expanded a little bit, but I can't assume that without actually finding the projectile. The older design, the four pedal with the softer copper did expand what seemed to be every time I was able to recover three out of the four I shot. Now, my most recent testing that I just did now, again, I took the gorilla back out to see if they're going to expand or they're just gonna zip through. And to my amazement, every single time they expanded. I don't know why they start to expand now after they've been sitting in my basement for so long, but they are. And that's what we're seeing with the four pedal kind of folding back on itself. The three pedal, the pedals are actually kind of falling off, whereas I couldn't even get them to expand last time. The amount of impact and oomph we're getting from these seems really good. If they were more consistent, these would be higher on the list. I think there's a lot of promise with these, and maybe I just got some bad cartridges sent to me. But at the price, I can't justify ever risking that if it was a self-defense situation. I don't know how you would want to justify that with hunting. Maybe that's not a problem as much, but for the price, there are better options. I like what Gorilla's doing. I think there's promise in their product. It just needs to be more consistent. And in this price range, it's not viable for me to put this in a self-defense firearm. So, Hornady Sub X, seventh place. The new three pedal design from Gorilla is six. And then the older four pedal design, if you can find it, 
would be fifth place. In fourth place, it's difficult for me to put these in here at fourth place because I really did love them when I first bought them, but it's the 198 grain Lehigh controlled fracturing. These had an average penetration of 16 inches. So originally I had the Lehigh controlled fracturing at like the second place kind of level, but I can't do that anymore. After seeing the high speed footage, it just doesn't seem to have that oomph and that impact that you're seeing on your screen right now as some of the other projectiles do. And I just don't know how useful the fracturing part is of this. If I'm looking for a self-defense round where I want stopping power, the projectile penetrates the solid copper core, it goes 16 inches, and those fins that come off of there are large, they're sharp, and they're moving quick because it's hard to recover any of them from the block because they shoot out so fast, as you'll kind of see here in the high-speed footage as it's exiting the top of the block and the side of the block and hits the table pretty hard. As far as if this would stop something or someone, I, I think it would, especially if they're not wearing body armor, but I don't know about stopping power versus the projectile that keeps its whole weight and stays together. Now it could cause some significant fatal injuries because these fins are potentially hitting multiple organs and large blood vessels. And if you get hit by two or three of them, now you've got eight different projectile fins and cores running through your body. So not a good day, but for my use of being a self-defense rifle, I think I'm going to have to skip on these, but they're interesting and the amount of damage and carnage they do with their permanent wound channels, I'm still putting them in fourth place. So the last three projectiles we're going to go over all perform phenomenally. You can definitely trust these in self-defense or hunting aspects if you use these in 300 blackout. I am very impressed with how each one of them perform. I just think that there's a little bit to gain going through the list. And in number three, we're going to have the Maker's 200 grain projectile. You can get these loaded as factory ammo from a couple different manufacturers, Black Butterfly or Defiant Musicians, and that way you can don't have to hand load them yourself. It's really hard for me to put Maker's at third place because I really do like how they perform. I really do like how they open up. It's a beautiful projectile that really performs great and it causes a nice oomph when it hits the uh, gel block, really good transfer of energy. It's just not as much as the, another, as the next two on the list. The primary wound cavity and then the permanent wound channel weren't as big as the other two projectiles and it, it just still works so well and they're all kind of in the same price range. I would just prefer the discrete or the Lehigh out over these. And with the other high-end projectiles on the list, these were consistent every time. Never had any feeding issues, never had any ejecting issues, never had any cycling issues, and they always opened up consistently and they performed and I could really trust these as either hunting or self-defense, hands down. Makers, third place. The Makers projectiles on average went to about a depth of 19 inches. Now this is a fun one. Discrete Ballistics 188 grained. This is another solid copper projectile. And these are tailored loaded to the length of the barrel you have on the website when you order them. That's amazing. Now, when I was shooting these, sometimes the pedals would come off and stay in the gel. Sometimes they would, the whole projectile would stay together. If pedals fell off, the average depth was more like 19 inches inside the gel where if the pedals stayed together onto the projectile, the average depth was about 16 inches of penetration. This one has a unique design where the tip of the projectile seems to have another spot where it initiates expansion upon contact with the gel, the animal, or whatever you're shooting at. So that initial expansion might be a little softer on that edge and that causes the whole projectile to peel back. I don't think you could actually clog this thing because it's pulling back on the whole projectile to get that expansion every single time and it expands every single time I shot it. I feel like this projectile is definitely more geared towards hunting and their website claims full expansion even at 100 yards. I kind of believe it because when I'm shooting it anywhere from 10 to 15 feet to the gel block, Sometimes those pedals are getting ripped off, I think, because it's hitting it at such a high velocity. Still, even with the pedals getting ripped off, the impact on the gel was insane. The primary wound cavity that it creates and the consistent permanent wound channel is 
just mind-boggling. With the consistency, with the unique designs of the projectile, and the amount of energy it's transferring, and the ability to still use it out to 100 yards in hunting, land this in the number two spot. I really like what Discrete's done here, and I think that you could really use these for both self-defense and hunting. And kudos to them for on their website, tailoring it to what rifle you're using. If you're using an eight, five inch blackout barrel, or you're using a 16 inch uh, Ruger American rifle and 300 blackout, they're gonna tailor the powder in the cartridge so you get that close to supersonic speed without going transonic and causing accuracy issues. So you can consistently use a suppressor and have great accuracy and precision. Oh shit. You okay? Did you spear yourself on? <laughs> I guess I did. Let me go get a paper towel before I start bleeding on everybody. Damn. And our winner, again, from all the testing I've done in the past, if you've ever seen my Reddit posts on 300 blackout ammo and gel testing, the 194 grain maximum expansion from Lehigh, just nobody beats them in my opinion. As you'll see from the pictures and the video, this projectile just always opens up the exact same way. Super consistent. And the other thing is the copper metal that this projectile is made out of seems to be machined better or it's almost like out of bar stock. It's really attached real snugly to the core of the projectile. Whereas like the discrete and the gorilla seem to kind of fracture off almost like the Lehigh fracturing bullet does. Now what deserves them in the top spot is the amount of energy they hit on that gel. And you'll see in the high speed footage and the wound channel that it just creates from that massive expansion spinning through the gel is phenomenal. The stopping power on these seems just the best out of all of them. They average about 15 to 17 inches of penetration over the dozens of rounds of these I've shot into gel. Now, I'm not some kind of bullet stopping doctor, scientist, whatever thing, and I don't know if this is gonna stop someone faster than a Makers or the Gorilla even, but just from watching the high speed and seeing how consistent they are, I put my trust in these over all of the other ones on the table. In conclusion, you can't really go wrong with either Lehigh Maximum Expansion discrete ballistics or the makers 200 grain but since the cost is fairly close at least especially for me with reloading them i'm always going to go with the lehigh maximum expansion now if i was specifically hunting i would always be using the discrete ballistics and i would be tailoring that to the rifle that i'm using for hunting Thank you all for tuning back in. I hope this was informative. I hope you really can get some good information out of your next 300 Blackout subsonic defensive ammo purchase. I know that this was a lot of testing over a long period of time for me, and I appreciate you sticking around to see the results. Bye.